Welcome, Aroma Time Live on Facebook. I tried this earlier today and it did not work. I, I'm sorry, I hope I have a better connection now. I want to talk fish, specifically salmon today, farm salmon versus wild salmon. Really, farm salmon specifically I'm going to talk about. Two days ago, I posted a picture on Facebook saying, um, if you like farm, wild salmon, like it. And a couple people commented, oh, I eat farm salmon and it's sustainable and this and that. And, and I'm going to talk about the 10 points of why you want to avoid eating farm salmon. Now, let me tell you, the whole industry is, is a bad industry to begin with in salmon farms. The whole industry has a bad rap. There are certain farms that might be doing a better job, but they're doing a better job in a capacity where you still have a detrimental outfit. So they're minimizing the effects. And because they're minimizing the effect, they get certain certifications there or, or they get a, a seal of approvals and saying, oh, this salmon farm is sustainable. And we're going to debunk salmon farms right now. And this, I'm getting all this information from Alex Morton. Alex Morton is a friend of mine. She's a marine biologist in British Columbia. And she originally went there to study the whales in British Columbia and noticed something that this wild salmon were actually disappearing. The wild sock in beautiful, bundleful, beautiful, bountiful British Columbia, the wild salmon were disappearing. And she noticed that more salmon farms were coming. And so she's correlating that the loss of wild salmon due to salmon farms, because salmon farms transmit all kinds of diseases into the wild salmon. So here we go. Here's her top 10 list. This is on her website. Um, I think Alex for Salmon or Alex Morton. Um, it'll be on my website. So you can go to aromatimedishow.com. Click the tab that says uh, what we do different and you'll, you'll see a pop down. And there'll be something on salmon there. Click that salmon link. It's be there. I'm not sure if it's there right now, but by the time you're watching this video, hopefully it is. So number one reason salmon farms never salt shovel their manure. They just let it fall through the nets. Think of a kitty litter box that never gets changed. Thousands of tons of feces and other waste settle on the seafood floor. That is true. Sometimes they'll move the farm to a different area, but they never really clean up the ocean where that farm was. And you can go online and you can see videos where there's excrement on the bottom of these ocean floors that are 10 feet deep. And it's a dead zone at that point. Nothing lives outside there for several kilometers on each side. Nothing can live in the bottom of the ocean floor. Number two. Salmon, Atlantic salmon, farm salmon, uh, swim in a soup of mucus and excrement. It breeds pathogens and enter into the ocean and into, enter into the ocean and the supermarket. So these salmon farms, because of all the excrement on the bottom and all the diseases and the salmon are swimming around. Now some salmon farms are gonna say, well, we have low density. They're gonna tell you low density farming. The average salmon farm puts two uh, salmon per bathtub. That's the density. So when somebody says I'm low density, they mean one fish per bathtub. So imagine a football field sized pen that's dropped into the ocean and you have for every bathtub of water, you have two salmon or one salmon swimming in that. It's still jam packed, but now they're getting some kind of seal of approval because they're doing far less density, half the density of, of their counterparts. But you can see there's still a problem with that. The fish still have to live and the feces falls and it goes into their eyes and it's, it's, it's a disaster. And by the way, all this stuff has links on it to, um, to make sure that there, this is properly researched and there's been some, this just isn't me or her saying something. Number three, a U.S. scientist studying toxins in farmed salmon told the media, one should avoid farmed salmon like the plague. And of course, there's links there to follow that on the website. Number four, farmed salmon are colored pink to imitate wild salmon. Producers use the uh, Samo fan, a Samo fan. So it's a fan. Like you go to you go to the store to buy paint for your uh, living room, and you get a, a fan of colors. Well, that's what they do. They get a fan of colors. What color do you want the salmon to be? And that's what food is going to correlate to the color of the salmon. So it's dyed. The, the fl flesh is indeed dyed. Now some of them say, well, we're giving it the antioxidant anazacithin, which is in the wild, and this and that, and it's the same as the wild fish. Well. Anataxithin. Anataxithin can come as a, as a synthetic or in the natural form, which krill and chlorella have it. Most salmon farms are not feeding their fish krill or expensive chlorella. They're actually using a petrochemical derivative of the acetaxithin. Um, and, that, and if they're not doing that, they're actually using something that's maybe derived from sugarcane or from corn, which you can see corn is not nearly as healthy as, as chlorella uh, or krill. So the diet's far different, even though the salmon, when you put it on the plate, they have an orangish color that might represent 
what's going on in the wild, and they're going to claim to you, well, we're giving our food, our salmon high quality feed that, um, that compares to wild fish and this and that, and it's antioxidant. It's most likely a petrochemical that they're giving it. Not saying that every single one uses that, but you can see there's a lot of manipulation weaving in and out of the propaganda and the hype when you start buying farmed salmon. You go to the grocery store and they have their own seal of approval on it. You talk to, if I would talk to a seafood vendor, they say, oh, I have the best farmed salmon in the world, Marcus. You should be, you should be trying this. It comes from here and this and that. So there's a lot of hype. Just be, be, be wary, wary. I actually called out True North. True North is a big, I've called out several larger salmon farms. In fact, I had uh, Marine Harvest on my back about three years ago. They kept tweeting me and they were like, you're spreading propaganda, you're spreading wrong stuff. And I said, so are you guys. But they would, they had all these fake Twitter accounts, and every time I posted something on farm salmon, they were coming in and attacking what I was posting, even though what I was posting had some really scientific ground to it. They were coming in and trying to debunk that. So they're working at every single level, whether they're attacking, they're getting the chefs like me, well not like me, but other chefs, to tell you that farm sal that's farmed salmon's okay, whether they're getting the, getting the seafood store, or even in the case grocery stores to say, hey, this has a certification and it's okay to serve. Um, so they're getting everybody on every single angle here on, on making you think that there's farm salmon out there that, that's, that's okay to eat when in fact the whole industry is riddled. And like I said, some farms are better than others. Um, number five, in 2013, Norway got, Norway got the European Union to allow 10 times more endosulfane in farmed salmon feed. This is a pesticide banned in many parts of the world because it's so dangerous to human health. Don't think because farmed salmon is in a pen and, and they're feeding it pellets that they're eating this pure thing. There's still so many contaminants and, and even cancer-causing thing, things in as preservatives and antioxidants in the salmon feed that they're actually feeding to the salmon. Don't think it's just some super clean pellet um, like s wild salmon would be out there eating krill and chlorella and maybe they might eat other fish. I, mean, I think they might eat other fish. But krill and chlorella, they're eating that a lot. Farmed salmon don't have that luxury. They actually have to eat what the farm is giving it, and the farm is relying upon food that was manufactured in a scientific lab in a big processing plant that is basically taking in millions of pounds of wild harvested fish, doesn't matter what it looks like, where it's from. If you're in Norway, they're going to the Baltic Sea to get all the salmon fish pellets, right? So they're going there, they're dredging the ocean there, which is, the Baltic Sea is not a clean ocean, people. You wouldn't want to eat stuff out of certain parts of that, if any parts of it. But they're feeding the salmon that you're eating, thinking, well, I'm eating this pure, clean Norwegian salmon, and it's got all these environmental, you know, and safety and, and it's certified green or certified sustainable or whatever, but what did the salmon really eat is the question. There's more than to it than just, just regular old fish in there, okay? They, there are preservatives, there are other things. Um, so they're putting uh, endosulfane in salmon feed, which was banned, uh, banned uh, in the world because it's dangerous to human health, and that's actually going to the salmon food. Number six. If farmed salmon feed contains pig byproducts, is smoked <laughs> farmed salmon kosher? So yes, fish farms, salmon farms actually use pig byproducts, and they even think chicken byproducts from what I've read, and there's the link to this article and all this, what, how, the sourcing of this. That's farmed salmon actually eat, pig farmers, the pig producers can't use every part of the pig, nor can the chicken producers. Nor can the beef producers. So when that animal, when these slaughterhouses, these processing plants is processed, whatever's left over goes to a refiner, to a manufacturer. It goes to a place that's actually going to use every single part of that animal. So ladies, if you're wearing lipstick, you could have beef brains in that lipstick. If you're putting on shampoo, there might be stray animal parts in there because it goes to, all this stuff goes to some industry. Well, pig byproducts are actually making it into salmon feed. So of course, pork is not kosher. Salmon is kosher, so the argument she's making here, if, if the salmon is eating pig, pork products, is the salmon still kosher? Uh, of course, it is still kosher, um, logically or illogically. I'm not sure how you want to say that, but it is. Number seven, seals, sea lions, and birds become trapped in salmon farm nets. If you follow the link there, you'll see pictures on my website. Uh, yes, other animals get caught in there. Even whales get caught. If you go to Alex Morton's website, she'll show you where they're rescuing whales out of all these nettings and sea lions get caught in there. And do you know that the salmon farmers are allowed to go out and shoot the sea lions? They're allowed to go out there and walrus, whatever gets caught in there, they're allowed to actually go out there. It doesn't matter where they are because they're there to protect their crop. And there's laws there that protect these farmers for doing so. 
But in reality, they've stuck to salmon farms in the middle of their environment, their habitat. So um, go figure. So you're eating more than salmon when you're eating farmed salmon. There could be other things that are losing their life because of that. Number eight, farmed salmon cannot feed the world because there are more fish to there's more fish to produce farmed salmon than actually salmon pr farms produce. So for every three pounds of wild fish that goes into f salmon pellets, salmon feed, only one pound of fish comes out. So the conversion ratio is a bit off. Um, that's because they have to fatten these fish and they, they gorge them. Uh, they want them to grow big. They want them to grow big as fast as they possibly can. And they, they don't swim much because they're trapped inside, you know, a football sized pen out there swimming with a couple hundred thousand fish. So um, it's, there is an apparent um, deficit of protein going here. So when they tell you that we're feeding the world or we can feed the world with aquaculture, they're actually robbing part of that food supply to other things like the wild salmon or to other things out there that need that and they're disrupting the ecosystem drastically and that's why they've started some of them have started going towards pig products big pig products and chicken by byproducts there's one farm in Ch in chile in south america called verlasso and if you look under monterey bay aquarium verlasso has one of the best um best notations there and saying oh this salmon's good and the reason why they're deeming it such a sustainable salmon is because they're not harvesting wild caught fish to feed the salmon. What they're doing is they're genetically modifying, genetically modifying fungus in a laboratory to feed the salmon. So if you're concerned about eating genetically modified foods and franken foods and laboratory foods, well the salmon, if you're eating verlasso salmon, and a lot of chefs who serve verlasso because they think it's so great, there it's riddled. The whole diet is genetically modified. It's all industrial, chemicalized, manufactured, um, Petri dish food, it's, it's, there's nothing really real going into there. They're tweaking that out with science um, and they're trying to out outsmart mother nature. So uh, let's see, number nine, wild salmon have gone into decline everywhere salmon farms operate. Here's the reason. Well, most of salmon farms are actually put in place where the migratory path of wild salmon are because they say, oh, wild salmon live here so well, let's put farmed salmon here. In reality, with all the disease, let me tell you something. Every salmon farm experienced disease. It experienced sea lice, it experiences all that. So they're gonna tell you, well, we don't give antibiotics or this or that. The, some of these farms, the fish you're eating might not get antibiotics, especially with Canadian fish, because in Canada, the government pays full price to every single Canadian salmon farm if they lose their crop, if they lose their fish. So what happens is they just kill every single fish there. Every fish gets put down. You can go online, you can see this. There's undercover videos of all this happening where they're just sitting there for hours and picking up dead salmon, killing the salmon, picking it up, and sticking it in tote boxes. And I don't know where that goes. It might go back into salmon feed, who knows? Uh, but the whole, they decimate the whole salmon farm. So if the salmon gets sick, they're right, they're not giving it antibiotics, they're just letting the fish die or they're killing it, and it's not going to market. So the fish you're getting from that farm might not have antibiotics, but fish on that farm actually did have antibiotics. Um, they might not be putting it in their food, they might actually be putting it into the water, dousing it, they douse, they douse the water with some pretty harsh stuff. I've seen some videos and I've seen some interviews where lobster farmers in Newfoundland, uh, not farmers, but lobster harvesters in Newfoundland in the bays there, when they douse the salmon farms, the lobsters all of a sudden just start dying in the bay because of the chemicals they're putting into the salmon farms. So whether one salmon farm says, well, we're not doing it, the guy up the stream, the guy up the bay might be doing it and it's all in the same bay, it's all in the same area. But the biggest problem is that, see you later, Willie. You working tonight? Awesome. See you later. No problem. Yeah, we're done. Facebook Live. Listen, it's, yeah, almost done. You can still listen. So the biggest problem is that all these salmon farms have disease. They have sea lice. They have all these things. And when the baby salmon hatch in the streams, they swim back down past the big salmon farms, and the sea lice attach themselves to the baby fry. These baby salmon fish, these baby fry, have no chance once, once the sea lice start attacking them. The natural... The natural predator to sea lice is for the salmon to swim into fresh water. As soon as that salmon goes to spawn and swims, swims up the stream into fresh water, fresh water kills the sea lice. Salt water makes sea lice thrive. So that baby salmon that's swimming out to the ocean never has a chance. This is one of the reasons why in British Columbia that they're just, the sam wild salmon population is being devastated, devastated beyond belief because the salmon farms are polluting them they're cross-contaminating, they're in the ocean. 
Now the ultimate deal with salmon farms is they need to go into a closed containment system. Um, Arctic char does this. So Arctic char looks like salmon, it looks like trout, it looks like a combo, it's not as big as salmon, it's bigger than trout. Arctic char is a great fish. Those are mostly farmed in closed containment systems, which means if there's a disease outbreak, that's not getting out into the wild. They can actually clean everything up and contain it and nothing else gets out there. There's no sea lions swimming into there because it, it's an inland system that might be inside of a building that's a closed containment system. But now imagine the cost, the cost of farmed salmon would skyrocket if that were to happen. So the industry is fighting this left and right. But in reality, salmon farming needs to go to closed containment systems. So the, all that feces and junk doesn't get out into the ocean and the disease and not killing off the wild fish. So if you like wild salmon, and you're concerned about, because let's face it, every ocean out there is getting polluted, right? The Pacific is a disaster. Every ocean is getting to a certain point where there's issues in the ocean. So if you want to still eat something similar to salmon, and you're concerned about wild salmon, farm salmon, I would suggest Arctic char. Arctic char would definitely be the way to go on that. Uh, number nine here. Norwegian doctors warn mothers do not feed farm salmon because of high levels of toxins in farm salmon. They're known to be damaging to developmental brains and babies. These are Norwegian doctors. Now, all doctors mostly tell moms, hey, go eat fish because it has that health hearty, the heart healthy fat, that brain fat, that omega threes that kids need. And if you're pregnant, you should be eating some of those fish with that, right? That's what happens sometimes. People say, oh, you need a high, uh, diet high in omega threes. Well, Norwegian doctors are saying, no, scratch that. Farm salmon is, is off the list. It's too toxic, too dangerous. And True North, True North Salmon, the salmon company, I called them out. I called them on the phone. I posted a video. I called them and said, hey, your website is so misleading. You posted a graph there that is so off. It's not even right, this graph, where you're comparing your fish to truly wild Atlantic salmon. And I, I said, so this is what's wrong with it. You guys are using bad science. You guys might be using real science, but you're taking that real science and putting it towards your product, which your product is not the product you're putting science on. So it's just, it's really manipulative marketing. Uh, most of these companies do that. So worldwide salmon farm, those are the 10 reasons. Worldwide salmon farming is largely Norwegian. 98% of the farms in British Columbia, Canada are Norwegian. Norway farms salmon, uh, Norway farms salmon in Norway, Chile, Canada, Scotland, and the Faroe Islands. People say, oh, I hear chefs say this. Why a Faroe Island salmon? It's so clean and pristine. And you go on the Faroe Island site, it shows these beautiful bays, these mountains, it's green, and the salmon farms in there. It says, farmed in nature, grown in pristine nature. What they don't show you is all the toxic nuclear waste they dumped there 50 years ago because nobody was in the Faroe Islands. They would just dump stuff left and right. They'd go off the coast of Scotland and stuff and just go out there and just dump. If you look at some true independent science, Norwegian, I'm sorry, Faroe Island salmon and Scottish salmon may be some of the most contaminated farmed salmon on the market. And it's not, might, might not be because of what they're feeding. It might be because of what's in the environment there. I mean, it, it, they're not showing you that part of, of the Faroe Islands. Norway has lobbied the European Union to allow uh, cadmium, GMO ingredients, endosulfane, pig and chicken byproducts in their farmed salmon feed. Today, the European Union allows far more toxins in farmed salmon than any other protein in the world. So they're saying that by law, you're allowed to give farmed salmon more toxins than any other protein, chicken, cattle, pork, lamb, than any other protein in the world. Farmed salmon is allowed by law to have the most. How can such high levels of toxins be safe in farmed salmon? Uh, it's, it's, and when it's not safe in beef, chicken, and eggs. It's not safe in beef, chicken, and eggs, but they're allowing it to be safe in salmon. That's the stronghold that the salmon producers have, the Norwegian trans, Norwegian salmon producers have. Um, I mean, what happened was they started nor farming salmon in Norway, um, and once Norway said, man, you guys are destroying our environment, they were like, tighten the regulations. So Norway had to move to, and then these Norwegian farms had to move to places that they could own the government. And Canada, Chile, Canada especially, they own the government. If they lose their salmon crop, Canada, the government turns right around and pays them full price. They don't need insurance for loss. But yet the local small towns and villages Taxes are through the roof. They can't get a librarian. And you have the salmon, the uh, Canadian government turning around paying out millions of dollars at a time to salmon farms it, because they thought, oh, this is going to provide so many jobs in Canada and it's going to add to our gross domestic product. But they're destroying the environment as a whole. They own the Canadian government, people. Norwegian salmon farm companies own the Canadian government. That's the bottom line. 
and they get, what away, they get away with what they want. When, when these influenzas break out, these flus break out, these salmon flus, the stuff doesn't get tested like it's supposed to get tested, not at all, because they're all hiding. Go on, check, up Alec, check out Alex Morton. She has some great stuff where she's gone in and tested things and gotten positive results for the same fish that the, Nor that the Canadian government's testing and not getting results for it. Because once they announce that a disease is in a certain area, then you, have, you officially have problems. So the government is never going to realize, the fish ministry is never going to publicly announce that they have this disease here or that disease here, because then, then the, the, that industry gets to get so much more tainted. The problem is the salmon industry is so tainted to begin with the farming industry. It's riddled with, with such bad practices that um, they're trying to redeem themselves right now, and they can't go backwards by, by announcing or admitting that there's all these new strains of flu and, uh, that, that, and, and disease that's happening in their salmon farms. So... I'm doing a Sam uh, a farmed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing a fish talk, uh, January seventh. Is it January seventh? Willie, when's what day is Saturday? The seventh. Yeah. This Saturday, the seventh. If you're watching it before January seventh, two thousand seventeen, I'm doing a fish talk at Frank the Shoe Fitter in Middletown. That's the place where most runners go get their running shoes. He does orth or or orthotics. Uh, he does more than runners, and um, I'm doing a talk there. Uh, go on to Facebook, go on to Aroma Time, check it out, RSVB for that. I'd love to see people there. I'll be handing out some gift cards to Aroma Time to the crowd. But I'll be talking about the 12 fish that um, you shouldn't be eating and what to eat instead. I know I made this a little longer than I wanted to, uh, but super powerful information. Now's the time of the year where people are on that health bandwagon. So if you know anybody that's trying to eat right or is concerned about what they're eating, please share this video, like this video, comment on this video. Thank you very much. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano from Aroma Time Bistro. Thanks for watching.